We are just here uh, for a short while. Um, we're asking questions from different churches. Um, we're not a cult. Uh, we're not religious in that sense because, you know, just because you might be religious, it doesn't mean to say you know the Lord. And we just believers follow Christ. I want to share some good news with you today. Uh, and things for you to just think about as you're going past. That's all. We're here. There's free literature there. If you want to take it, uh, free books. Uh, you can ask any of us any questions. We don't know everything, but we know enough. And if you want prayer for anything, please come up and speak to us. We're here to share uh, with you all. Um, I lived in uh, Northampton for 30 years, so I would treat you like my neighbour. Uh, I love you like my neighbour. And I can say that because I understand what it is to live, how tough life is, uh, the issues that happen. This is the best news you're ever going to hear. Uh, and it is what's called the gospel. There is only one gospel. One Lord, one baptism, one Holy Spirit. So I just want to explain something there. And we talk about religion. I just want to share with you some, something you may know and you may not. If you're, you, you may not know this, even if you're a Catholic. Um, and I love Catholics. Um, I want to share something with you. Um, I want to ask you a question first. Do you think you're a good person? Then I want to go to Mary. You've heard of Mary. Uh, Mary, who was the blessed one, who actually uh, carried the Lord himself Amazing, the creator of the earth, fully man, fully God. Uh, she was blessed. A lot of her, a lot of people put her up on this thing. Uh, but let me share something with you. Uh, Mary knew that she was in need of a savior. This is Mary, the mother of Jesus. Mary knew she was a sinner. How about that? I'm a sinner that's saved. And Mary said, this is Mary saying it, my soul exhorts the Lord and my spirit has begun to rejoice in God my Savior. Because he has looked upon the humble state of his servant for from now on all generations will call me blessed because he who is mighty has done great things for me and holy is his name. Now for Mary, who was a chosen woman, Mary to realize she needed a savior and she also realized she was a sinner like, like us. And that is true to scripture. Scripture says there is no good, no, not one. I don't want to ask you that question again. Do you think you're a good person? The Bible says that God cannot lie. Titus. Ask yourself this. If Mary knew she needed a saviour, I'm not a Catholic, I'm a Christian, but if Mary knew she needed a saviour, she knew she was a sinner, like me, like us. Ask yourself. Now we know if we drive on the road, there are laws, we're given the laws by the government, and if we know those laws, they tell us not to speed over 30 miles an hour in a built up area. If we do 50, we could get stopped, fined, and points on your license. That's the law. Now God gave a moral law, it's called the Ten Commandments. I wonder if you know any of them, or can remember some of them. But I want to ask you this question again. Do you think you're a good person? 
See, when we compare ourselves with our family or our friends or our neighbours, we might come off better. We might say, actually, I have done this too. We might come off better and say, actually, I'm better than my neighbour or I'm better than my friend who I've known for years because I don't do that, what he does. And we compare ourselves with each other. But you see, when we compare ourselves with a holy and righteous God, it's a different story. It's like if you go out to the fields, there was a story one winter, there were sheep up on the hill, and this girl looked at the sheep, and against the green background, they looked pure and white, and with their lambs wool, they looked wonderful. They looked uh, clean and everything. Then it snowed, pure white snow, it snowed and fell on the hill, and she looked again up on the hillside, and those sheep that were there that once looked purely white, they looked filthy against the white background of the pure snow. And that's like us, that's like me, I'm the same as you. If I compare myself with other people, I might be better than them, I might be worse than them. But when I compare myself with God, I am filthy rags. As Isaiah said, six, seven, eight hundred years before Christ was crucified, Isaiah the prophet said, he was like filthy rags compared to God. So when I ask you these questions, you think for yourself, I'm not judging you, I have no right to judge you. You think for yourself, judge yourself. Let me ask you, how many, I'm just going to cover a couple of those things in the moral law. How many lies have you told in your life? 10, 20, 40,000, too many you can't remember? How many lies, ask yourself this, how many lies have you told? What do you call someone who tells lies? A liar, sir. Let me ask you another one from the moral law. Have you ever taken anything that did not belong to you, even if it was a pencil from school? You know, when I was a young lad, I used to go into the local sweet shop and I would fill my pockets up off the shelves with toffees. Then I'd go and share them out with my friends. I thought I was doing all right till I was told that was wrong. And I felt the guilt. I, I, I felt I, I was thieving. And what do you call someone who takes things that don't belong to them? A thief, sir. That's right. So, so far, your own confession, if you're honest with yourself, there on those two, you're a lying thief, just like I, just like I was. Let me ask you another one. Have you ever lusted after anyone? Whether it be male or female. Jesus takes it a bit further, and it's in the moral law, thou shalt not commit adultery. Jesus says, if you lust after another person, you committed adultery therein within you. And today we've got 24-7 pornography and all that garbage. All that garbage. So ask yourself, if you ever lusted, have you ever committed adultery? Jesus says, if you look upon another person with lust inside you, you've committed adultery. Let me ask you one more. Have you ever taken God's name in vain? You know, you've, you've been doing some work at home with a hammer and you've hit your thumb. Ah, and out comes that, out comes that curse word. And we take God's name, we use it as a curse word. Let me ask you, would you use your mother's name and take it as a curse word? You wouldn't, sir, would you? No. My mother's passed on, but I would not take her name and use it as a curse word because I love her. You love your mother, so you wouldn't use your mum's name as a curse word. But the very God that gave us bread, eyes and ears, and life, and love and all these emotions of families and children, we curse him and 
yet, we wouldn't be here without him. And you say, oh, I don't believe there is a God. Well, you can't get something from nothing. That's impossible. Scientifically impossible that this galaxy and universe came from nothing. You think about that one. So, listen, if there is a God and you stand before him on your day, I've only covered four of the moral law, not all of them. God says, uh, you shall not take my name in vain. He says, those who do shall not go unpunished. He said, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not commit adultery, and thou shalt not give false witness. So there we've broken four of them already. When you stand before him on your day, will you be innocent or guilty? If you're honest. If I answered that uh, uh, some while ago, I was guilty. I was guilty. So then you ask yourself, heaven or hell from a righteous God, a holy, righteous God, heaven or hell? If you answer that sincerely, you're going to ask yourself then, does that concern you? See, God has given us a, uh, a conscience. Every one of us, 8 billion people on this earth. And in Jeremiah, which was 2,648 years ago, Jeremiah said, But I will make a new covenant with the whole nation of Israel. After I play them back in the land, says the Lord, I will put my law within them and write it on their hearts and minds. I will be their God, they will be my people. So that means that God has written his law on, missed that one, on our hearts and minds. Now, 2,000 and more years later, in Romans, Paul was writing to the Romans, and he says, in that they show the work of the law written in their hearts, their conscience, bearing witness, and their thoughts, alternatively, alternately accusing or else defending them. So, there you have it. Uh, nearly 3,000 years ago, prophets saying God's going to give us a conscience. He's going to write it on our hearts and minds, the law, the moral law. And now Paul writes in Romans that your conscience is bearing witness and your thoughts alternately accusing or defending yourself. That is why we know when we do things wrong, some of the time we know they're wrong. The conscience accusing us or defending us. We know it's instinctively that it is wrong to rape a five-year-old child. We know that's wrong. How do we know that? Because of the moral law that was written inside us, the conscience that God gave us. Now, we can suppress that conscience. The Bible says they suppress the truth in all their unrighteousness. We can do that. We can push that conscience away so that we can do the things we want to do. But the fact is, it's still there. And when we stand before God, there'll be no excuse. Oh, God, he's so wise. He's so wise. And loving. The Bible says the reason we die, and we all die, we look around the world, we die, our families die, friends die, trees die, animals die, flowers die, because that's the wages of a fallen world. And the Bible says that the wages of sin is death. That's why we die. They're wages for what we do. But here's the good news this morning. Which I'm coming to. But the law says, for who the moral law, that we all know what is right and wrong, 
we teach our children, don't do that, Jimmy. Or we teach Mary, don't do that, that's wrong. We discipline them. We don't let them do whatever they want to do as kids. My grandchildren are the same. But then with me, you know, uh, I make sure I'm a proper grandfather with them. So we teach our kids to rise up properly. We teach them. You don't have to teach kids how to misbehave and do wrong, but we do have to teach them how to do right. For whoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend in one point, he is guilty of all. That's what the Bible says. So even if we haven't done some of those things I've mentioned, but we've done one, we've broken the whole law, we've been lawless against a, a, a loving, holy and righteous God. Paul also writes in Romans, I'm just sharing good news here, Therefore the law is holy, and the commandment holy and just and good. So the law, the moral law that we all know that's inside us, we have a conscience, it is holy and just and good for our benefit. God loves us so much, he gave us that conscience that we could live an abundant life in truth. Because sin will only destroy us. Remember, the author of sin comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And I can tell you, I've tangled with it myself, I've been on the wrong road, and I can tell you I was not winning, I was losing. I thought I could win on that wrong road, but I was losing because he comes to kill, to steal, and destroy. He has no love. The enemy has no love for me or for you. But the law is also good. Wherefore, the law, the moral law, was our guide to bring us to Christ that we may be justified by faith. Just like Moses. Moses was justified by his faith. Not because he was circumcised or uncircumcised. A religious situation. He was justified by his faith. And you see, you can't work your way to heaven. <laughs> Man would like to do that, you know. Man's got a lot of pride. And he would like to stand before God and say, Look what I did. Look what I did, Lord. Aren't I good? I got into heaven by my own works. No, that would be blasphemy for what Christ did on the cross. For Christ went on the cross, and before that, he was scourged. He was whipped by the Romans that had pieces of metal in the end strands, and they would tear the back of the skin out of his back. And often that would kill a criminal even before they were crucified. But then Christ was nailed to that cross. It must be serious what his goal was for them to do that to him. Because in the end his last three words were, It is finished. He said, It is finished. What a wonderful three words. Thank you Lord. Thank you God that you did that. Who is he, this, this Christ? Well, he's called many names. He's called the Alpha and Omega, the seed of uh, Abraham, uh, mighty God. He's also called the light of the world, mighty God, Omega, refuge, the root of David. He came through the line of David to his birth. He's also called the bridegroom. Jesus is called the bridegroom. If he's the bridegroom, there must be a bride. Think about that one. He's called the I Am, the last Adam. He's called the propitiation for our sins. He's called the redeemer. He redeems us from our sinful robe. He's called the word. 
He is called the bright morning star, the Lamb of God, the Prince of Peace. Whoa. The Prince of Peace. Who else in the world is called the Prince of Peace? Is there anyone else ever called the Prince of Peace? Is Putin called the Prince of Peace? Is Xi Jinping called the Prince of Peace? Of course they're not. We know they're not. There's only one man walked this earth, and that is Christ who was called these things and who was these things. He's called the mediator, the mercy seat, the prince of peace, the prophet, the savior, just like Mary said. My God, my savior. Mary knew she needed a savior. And yet God blessed her with her carrying the baby Jesus. How is that amazing? He's called the advocate. He's called the bread of life, the bread of life. That means we feed on him. If he's the, these are bold statements. These are bold statements. You either have to be this person to back it up, or you're just a delusional religious man. One of those two things. You have to ask yourself, which was Jesus Christ? He's called the comforter. He's called the, oh I need that, the comforter, the deliverer, the first and last, and he's also called God. Mary knew that, bless Mary, I don't worship Mary, I worship Christ, but Mary knew that, she knew she needed a saviour, she knew she was a sinner. Now we may experience losses in our life, we cannot recover, we may face pains that are awful, we may receive persecution, tragedies that happen in life, burdens and disappointments. This is all part of life. This is why I say, as a neighbour, and you're my neighbours, I can say I love you because of these things. I understand. But God is loving also, as well as being holy and righteous. And he says, are not five sparrows sold for two copper coins? And not one of them is forgotten before God, but the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Do not fear, therefore, you are of more value than many sparrows. God says that about every one of you, you are more value than many sparrows. How about that? The creator of the universe loves you so much. He says those words. Loves you so much that he gave all he had, which was his son, to pay that price on the cross for us because we've broken that law. That's what Jesus did. He was a propitiation. He went and paid that price. I should have paid that price for what I did in my life, but he paid that price. All I have to do is turn and put my trust in him, repent to him, an old fashioned word, really saying I'm sorry for what I've done. Repentance. Greek word means metanoia. It means a change of mind, a turning round. When you put your trust in him, just like we trust our family and our husbands and wives and friends and our bosses, he will give us peace. He will give us reconciliation with God. He will give us hope, victory over trouble. He will love us like he has always done. He will give us the Holy Spirit to teach us all these things. There's only one. He will give us deliverance from his wrath. God says in his word that the wrath
wrath of God applies on all those sinners who turn away and shut that door on him. Because he's given his all. Jesus says, it is finished on the cross. He did everything. There'll be no excuse on that day. So gives us deliverance from wrath, from God's justice that we should have. And he'll give us joy of knowing him, of walking with him, of him teaching us, loving us, leading us. That's my good news message today. I know where you're coming from. If you're honest, ask yourself these questions. Come back to that one question. Do you think you're a good person? Even Mary recognized she was a sinner and she needed a savior. And Mary is a blessed woman in the Bible. I'm not Catholic, but I don't worship her. I worship Christ, but Mary recognized my soul exalts the Lord. So thank you for listening, Northampton, and have a good day.